Now we're, we're talking about another sealed system. Again, remember you got electrical and you got mechanical. We're in this right now, we're only concerned about the mechanical. These are known, this little system, even though it's a sealed system, is known as your rotary compressor. So when you're looking at it, look up rotary compressor and you'll figure, you'll see where the pages talk about how this operates. Read it, because you're going to explain it to the, uh, the faculty. Now, let's discuss the low pressure side. Now it's coming in and everybody's going, well, what is this? Well, what it is, is a filter mechanism, which you've heard the term slugging, where liquid refrigerant will come back into a compressor. Normally, these type of small uh, rotary compressors are in your window units and freezers and stuff like this. If your coils get dirty, and this doesn't come in as a low pressure, low temperature, superheated gas, and liquid is coming back in here. This screen, which you can see, and it's very, very fine and minute little uh, tiny holes in there. Well, what it actually does is takes those droplets of refrigerant and because of the pressure, shoves it through there and it evaporates. So what it's really doing is it's trying to ensure that only vapor comes through that line. It also has a little storage area just in case liquid does get through there. Because the liquid's heavier, it's going to sit at the bottom. And as the compressor gets warm, it will warm this up and it will boil off that refrigerant and it will get sucked down into the tube here. So now, knowing what that is and how that works, you notice that your low pressure tube is at the bottom of this one. This is the mechanism that if you had the capability of doing, you could take it out. You notice that you have your motor, which this is your electrical component. This is your stator because this stays. This is your rotor because this rotates. That's the easiest way I can tell you. Now this is crimped into this casing. So, you know, don't get all worked up about it. Just understand that this being the stator, this is where your start run and windings are. Start run and common windings are in the motor. All right. When you take this apart, you can look at it, see which ones are which what. You know, I want you to look at stuff like, well, on the electrical side, why are some of the wires thicker and the other ones are thinner? Well, research that and figure it out. There's a purpose behind that. They all have shellac or varnish coating on your wiring. All windings have that. Otherwise, they all short out as soon as uh, they were uh, plugged in. It has the little idiot cap. Of course, that's all done in the uh, factory, but that's how they just slam these things together. Now, this is the heart of the unit right here. As you apply electricity to this, the voltage, it's going to start turning your, your piston, okay? And it rotates. This one doesn't rotate 360 because it's glued in there kind of, so we don't lose all the parts. But as you can see, if this was turning at a regular RPM, if you look down here, you see a spring down here along with a little sleeve. And that sleeve, I'm going to show you here in a minute what that serves, what purpose that serves. But when you take this apart, look at it, and remember that all these white lines have to marry up with each other. Otherwise, 
you're going to have a pile of steel here and you'll never figure it out. All right? It's like uh, playing a guessing game. So now we're going to discuss, when I take this off, how that refrigerant is compressed. Okay. So now we remove most of the screws. We left the last one in. As we pull it out, when you go to remove this, remove it carefully because as you notice, things will start falling apart here. All right. Turn it on its side and remove the cover at the, the base of the, the compressor. Now you'll see why I was saying that you got to have everything lined up here. Inside here, again, the motor is eccentric with the shaft, meaning that nothing more than it's off-centered. It's not 90 degrees. That's why, remember that little shaft, or the uh, metal bar that you saw from the top? Well, there's a spring inside here, and it's connected to this little bar. And you notice that right now, at the very top here, it's wide open, all right? And at the bottom, it's extremely tight. Well, if you notice something here, let's just play this as it would ha be happening in real life. Remember, our compressor, this hole right here, is attached right here to the low pressure side coming in. So your refrigerant, is coming into this hole as a low pressure, low temperature, superheated gas. So, as that does, your refrigerant, as the shaft turns, the eccentric shaft, allows this to spring down because it's under pressure. And the refrigerant is now starting to fill this cavity. As it fills, of course, okay, it gets larger. At some point, it will no longer take any more refrigerant. And as like any other compressor, as it turns, it will start tightening up. Now, remember, refrigerants in this side, refrigerants in this side. This refrigerant right now is a low pressure. This is now becoming a high pressure because as it tightens and does its rotation, it's tightening that refrigerant into a very, very um, small area, all right? So what you have to be paying attention to is as it's low pressure on this side and high pressure on this side and this starts to crank in, all right, it's raising that pressure and temperature of that refrigerant. If you look down inside here, all right, and right below this little sleeve, you'll see a hole. And that hole has a reed valve on it. And remember the reed valves are there to s separate the low side from the high side. But this reed valve is on the high side, and as that pressure builds up, that is designed to open up at a certain pressure. When it does, it opens up and allows the refrigerant to travel into the center of this shaft. That refrigerant goes straight up that shaft as a high pressure, high temperature, superheated gas. When it hits that, remember your cover is on this. Now, for simplicity, we had to remove some things, but this pipe goes and joins this little piece down in here, all right? So all of this is joined together. Now, this is separate from the motor because, of course, if the motor turned, it would tear the, the copper right apart. But understand that at that moment, the refrigerant is in there 
and you can take out the sleeve that's in there or it just may fall out and you'll have a better picture of that valve that we we're talking about. All right. And it's only on the high side. All right. Now, when you're playing with this, and I use that loosely, you need to off center it a little bit and watch your fingers because it's a tight fit. All right. Just drop that down in there. All right. Because you won't be able to put the cover back on without all this fitting down in there snugly. All right. So let's just, for simplicity, let's just go over this one more time to understand the refrigerant flow in this. As we were saying, it goes into the low side, comes into the compressor right here as a low pressure, low temperature, superheated gas. You notice that the, hot, the low side and the high side are separated by this spring-loaded piece of metal right here. As the refrigerant goes into this chamber, it's low pressure, low temperature, superheated gas. As you can see, all right, as that refrigerant fills up inside here as a low pressure, it's going to rotate 360 degrees. As it does, it's filling this complete chamber of low pressure, low temperature, superheated gas. As it rotates back around on the second turn, it's now squeezing that refrigerant that it already captured. Now it's on the high side. It's squeezing it into a high pressure, high temperature superheated gas. And then that process is started all over again. All right? But it, understand that it's consistent. All right? As soon as this low side fills up, the high side has already expelled and pressurized refrigerant from the previous uh, rotation. So you got a con continuous flow of low pressure, high pressure, low pressure, high pressure uh, movement in the, uh, the refrigerant system. All right? Now, I need to ensure that when you go to put this back together, you put it back just the way it's designed. And that's why we painted the little idiot stripes on here. Because if you don't, you're not going to get this back together. So be sure that all the white lines marry up, set it down on its face, and then start dropping the uh, screws in there so that they all line up. Because I'm telling you, if you forget that, you could be here for a while. All right. And remember that there's always two parts to a compressor, the electrical side and the mechanical side. We're only concerned about the mechanical side at this present moment. All right? Don't use any tools on this stuff. We don't want to get it uh, put in there so that we'll never be able to get it out. Now, when you go to put this back in, be sure that your low pressure side is connecting to your low pressure line. All right? And you don't have to cram it in there. Just slam, put it in there and ensure that your electrical side of your wiring is at the top because, of course, it, it would connect. There's another connector that would connect that to the, the common start and run windings. All right? Put all the parts back in there so that it's ready to go for the next student. All right? Now, again, it's a compressor. It doesn't matter what refrigerant. You got to ensure that it matches the refrigerant 
that you have in there, you just can't take one refrigerant and change it with another compressor. That uh, You're gonna ruin it. And remember that compressors, when it comes to electrical side, will be damaged by acid. Acid is moisture, all right? Moisture and soot and other uh, products, and that will damage your compressor. The mechanical side is damaged because people cross uh, contaminate with refrigerants. They don't do a good evacuation. They don't dry out the system with a filter dryer. There's all these other little tiny increments that if you don't do it, it's going to result in a poor installation and eventually death to the compressor. Um, companies now, you have to return the compressor because they're going to cut it open to find out what the problem caused, what caused the problem. So you're paying for the compressor up front, but you may not get your money back if they find out that it was a poor insulation. So be very careful what you're doing out there.